Dear Mama, your gifts will make a way for you. Speak into existence all you desire for your community, your children, your friends, and your family. Declare for yourself how you will be fulfilled by your work. Show up in the fullness of your authentic self and allow your talents to bless the world. In this episode, Black Mama Magic plus Aggie Pride equals Jania Mitnall Williams, mother of four, founder of Mahogany Milk Support Group, and literally works every day to change the trajectory of the health outcomes among Black people as the current program director of the Pathway to Human Lactation Training Program at North Carolina A&T University, the first lactation certification program at a public HBCU. Our desire is to expand the conversation around breastfeeding beyond the physical to the spiritual and position breastfeeding as a critical element of the movement for Black lives. We need more of us showing us how to feed our babies in the thriving promised land we imagine. So we are honored and excited to have a wonderful conversation with a Black mama laying this critical foundation for liberation. As always, we encourage you to invest in us because when you invest in them Black Mamas, you're investing in a platform curated by three Black women actively cultivating spaces rooted in healing, creativity, and liberation for Black Mamas. You can help us to continue to be Black Mama Built by subscribing to our podcast, share with at least one person, Follow us on social media and engage through social media comments. DM us or email us with questions at demblackmamas at gmail.com. Join our email list by visiting our website. Become a patron, purchase merch, or make a one-time donation. And, And all of those links are available in our show notes, which are available on our website, dimblackmamas.com. Now... Let's get free, y'all, and jump into episode 35 of Damn Black Mamas. everybody welcome back to the ride this is the best podcast in the universe i am crystal snail irby mother of four three boys and one girl and as you can see i sound a little bit more enthusiastic and excited because i'm no longer in the corner of my room recording the podcast (laughs) i am back at my desk yay why were you in the corner of the room girl these kids Um, um, you know but we have started virtual schooling and so they have some other things to engage with so Mm. i am just elated to be back at my desk looking out the window as we record this podcast into my backyard. <laughs> and I am Thea Monier, mother of three girls. Sorry if I sound like Snuffleupagus. Air quality in California right now is crap, but uh, we're going to push through. But y'all are dealing with the COVID better than the rest of the country. I am Nikisha Killings, mother of four girls, one of which is screaming crying outside <laughs> I thought you were unsure I didn't want to say that but I just go let it rock Keish I'm just gonna let it rock she's she's uh she's uh <laughs> taking up space expressing herself oh, she is gonna hate this podcast because she's gonna feel like that is the only time where I cannot get what I need on demand. She's gonna hate podcast. She was just in here getting all that she needed and she left. So I thought it was okay to shut the door. And so I'm out here. I'm out here with the COVID deniers. The COVID Ugh. deniers is where I am. Ugh, Still. Good God. Thea can't even. I can't. I really can't. Not- <laughs> we, were, we went to Hollywood to pick up Halani's friend and I was like, 
Oh, these folks, some of these folks ain't wearing masks. Like, <laughs> what is going on? In Pasadena, it here. looks like The Watchmen. You know, like, it, I would love it'll that. It around. It'll probably fuck it around. So to go to Hollywood, and I'm like, wait a minute. Now, y'all know you're killing people from all over the world. You need to really be covered up. I Listen, yeah. when we put in the Hollywood, and me and Lonnie looked around and saw that people were wearing masks, we put our mask in the car. Like, we feel like the air itself. Yes. Was yes. the problem. Somebody the like other, the just this me. week, it was just like this week, watching. somebody tried to convince me to take the kids to Disney. You know, it's only 25% capacity right now. No wait for rides. And I was like, no wait for Rona but either. But y'all be touching everything. <laughs> but y'all be touching everything. <laughs> what are you talking you know, about? We are such a capitalistic country. It's like, oh, it's cheaper. Yeah, I'm willing cheaper. to, I'm willing I'm to my risk life. my life. <laughs> it is so cheap right now. And there's I no can't. wait for mine. Go get all, oh. the, all the Rona. Go get it. But you know, know, nobody ever talks about that moment where you are out and you got your mask and everybody got their mask and somebody cough. Mm. It's like who farted? <laughs> That's what that looks like now in the store, right? Like you're just like, you know, people can cough and it can, you can cough and it cannot be Rona. <laughs> but you also feel like you couldn't help that in. Oh. Huh? Listen, oh. we know that's not realistic, no. but oh. coughing during COVID has become the new who farted. It's not okay. The, we had some people coming over to fix a curtain rod the other day. I opened the door and the dude coughed and I was like, no, no, <laughs> we can't do this. We can't cough right now. In Florida, you should be. He had on a mask, that. but he was like, I'm just a smoker. And I was like, still, you can't. You like, picked that's a bad time. Be. You picked a bad time. I don't cough for seasons in public. I swallow it. Good God. What? That's violent. I mean, I'm rarely in public, but when I am, I do not cough. In fact, I get all the coughs out in the car so that when I go in. I mean, it's, I, it's, I think it's almost in. scarily becoming normal. To where I do think we're getting a little bit relaxed about other things, like yeah. the hand washing. I think because we see the mask, we yeah. assume everybody's doing everything. Mm-hmm. I feel like myself even slipping on, like, I use the hand sanitizer spray, but the actual hand washing, like, regularly is something that I have to remember, too. But, you know, again, I think I have to point out that I think that this is a California thing because I don't think folks is showing up in masks, you know, all over the country like they are in California. And no, no, it's nothing at all. Yeah. And like so I think so right. everybody's it's, just out here breathing. Yes. Regular. Much. I, mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm a little nervous about the fall winter seasons. As you should be. Yeah. But if you think that this is a hoax right, right, and right, that right, the right. numbers are inflated, then you're not, folks aren't concerned about that. So, Ugh. I mean, I'm concerned about the fall and winter season, especially with these kids going back to school. Um, are they at going least back? Twice a week. How are they going back when My all, kids every aren't. time a school system goes back to school, 500 people got the Rona the next week? Like, when are we going to learn from this? Well, you have to go back if your parents have to work. I think there are a lot of parents who do not want to send their children back, but their jobs are not going to give them the time off to be at home right. with their kids. And right. so that was a very they, privileged perspective. It is. It's a privileged perspective, but it's, it's a righteous perspective as well. It's tied together. They want the schools open so that we can keep the workforce going. That's what that's about. Like if the schools aren't open, then these parents can't get out here and work. And so, you know, they're sending them back uh, twice a week. And then eventually, you know, they're going to go to five days. Mm -hmm. I I want to say that's how we're going to get herd immunity, right? Because it's just going to continue to pass, 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 pass until everybody who's either got it. And it's an election year. And it's an election year. Mm -hmm. But can we talk about the mail? My mom pays her bills regularly the first of the month. She's one of them old school folks. And none of her bills, none of her payments got to where they needed to go. Because I was going to wow. mail in my ballot. And I'm in California. We talked about that. I'm gonna, I was going to mail in my ballot because I was like, I just want my part. Like, I don't want no mistakes. No, I just want to turn it in. Mm-hmm. But then we started seeing people would send us stuff and they had sent it by, by postal service. And it hadn't gotten here if you're gonna mail your ballot in you need to do it early and you need to track your ballot i would not be mailing in my ballot late october i mean we're gonna vote in person but we're gonna vote early in person you know as soon as we're able to vote in person here we're gonna go vote in person with the non-mask wearers so now here when you go vote well where we were voting you had to wear a mask so you had a we had a mask on and 
they give you a Q-tip to do to touch everything. With. Yeah. So you're not like touching, touching the screen. Mm-hmm. I mean, they put some things in place that made us feel comfortable, but we just feel like we're in a red state. We have a huge Senate race. Yeah. Like no one has ever given Lindsey Graham this much trouble. It's tied right yeah. now. Wow. And so we just don't want to risk no, mailing I, in a I ballot. Sure. So Listen, yeah, yeah. So we felt like the best thing is to go early because there won't be a lot of people. I almost feel like I'm just doing it to relieve stress. Like, yeah, because no, it talk. feels mm-hmm. so in- it is, it's not, it doesn't just feel mm-hmm. intense. It is actually intense. And I can only imagine it getting more and more and more intense as we lead up to November. For sure. And then girl, because we ordered everything in all the plastic ways. Is anyone else having a struggle? Were you trying to save the country, save the planet, save your kids, save I your do. family? I do. I do. So, so this, I feel like I don't know if I can save everybody today. The other day I was in Target trying to find the most eco-friendly product for this. And then trying to find them. But then I need the mosquito repellent like, because that could be carrying this. But then that got chemicals. And then I got overwhelmed just trying to be a good human. Do you understand? Trying to raise these kids right, trying to keep everybody safe, trying to touch things, trying to keep the six feet, trying to, and then, but then if I stay home, I got to depend on eating out or Amazon, and they're the devil, and then they bring everything in plastics, and the plastics is bad, they're not breaking down, and then I got to get a recycling bin. Y'all, please help me. I, I, I'm so overwhelmed trying to be a good person right now. I'm so overwhelmed. Trying to, to check, trying to save Church. the world. You know, you yeah. have to approach it like a Baptist, okay? Baptists are like, I want to save the world, but I'm about to order off Amazon. God ain't finished with me yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it's like, whose day is it today? Yeah. Who today do I save the chickens? <laughs> Tomorrow I'll save the plants and the whales. Do the Baptist approach. Oh my God. You know, we'll cut somebody out and be like, God know my heart. You know what I'm saying? I have to be True. like that. The other day, I had a full breakdown just trying to be a good person. <laughs> I said, no matter what I do, somebody's going to get hurt. That's how I felt. You're eating vegan. I'm you're not, you're, you're doing I'm a lot. I'm intermittent fasting. I'm praying. You know what it's morning. like? Do you remember that time for Lent? You I gave was up meat and, and chocolate. And I gave up chocolate. Yes. And I gave up meat and chocolate. And, and I you was like, that's a lot. That's doing? exactly what it is. Yeah. I feel like it is a lot. And. It may be too yeah. much, and I may just need to pick small goals. Yeah, yeah. Like, like God maybe I'm heart. composting, and I'm really working on decreasing my carpet footprint. But I also need these packages delivered you know, so that I don't go out and catch COVID. I, think I <laughs> y'all, this is where I really lost it in the pad aisle because I have four. I have four. It's four women in this house. You think about the number of plastic wraps and pads that come for four women but then the kind that were cotton you know the kids say those don't have the wings and those don't catch everything and then I was like well should I just get the diva cup and then one of us can re- reduce the carbon footprint and that's just where I just fucking lost it it's too much you can't take on that that right now okay it's too much. we're trying to stay alive we're trying to stay run free and also save the planet right now that's how I feel Oh my! Because when I get these groceries delivered multiple times a week, because I'm not going to the grocery store, when I get these groceries dropped off, and there's like 20 bags on my doorstep, I'm like, you know, well, I do recycle the bags, but then do they really get recycled or are they thrown into no. a landfill? I don't know. Garbage, <laughs> garbage plastic bags? Yeah, they just throw them. Away. They just put. Well, them I bet I go on Amazon. I'm looking for these biodegradable trash bags, but then wait. But you know what though? I will say. Well, black people in the South, those plastic grocery bags, we use those they things, we use those things a million things. times. Let me tell you what they like, do. They do. They use them for conditioning your hair, for co-washing. When you deep condition your hair, you put them on there as a shower cap. You can use it to catch other recycling. You can use them to pack your kids' lunch when they go to school on a rough day. You use them for trash bags, like trash in the bags. little trash, little trash bags. bags. Around the house, yes. Tote bags, gift bags, yeah. shit, if you're desperate someday. <laughs> You know what? But so I do feel like we don't just throw them out. We do recycle them and reuse them. I applaud you, Angelino, <sighs> because lot. down here in these parts, we're just <laughs> trying to get the mask on. You still trying to put to the get mask the mask. We on. are. We we just doing the basics. I looked up, y'all. I looked up bamboo paper towels that are reusable, but they are only twenty a roll, and they're like not ten dollars. <laughs> and so I was like, that's not cost effective unless everybody in the house agrees that we're gonna reuse these bamboo rolls. I'm just trying to a good human trying to raise good humans. Just I to, feel like I am down here in the belly of the beast of white supremacy, running a program for black girls who are interested in writing and performing. I am doing my part. God knows my heart. 
And so I'm about to recycle these Walmart grocery bags. And then these so, plants be looking at me like, bitch, you're not going to do more. And I was like, I'm doing what I can. <laughs> right. Y'all here. Y'all happy. Y'all thriving. Is that helpful? Girl. I just feel a lot of judgment. I feel like you need to have this conversation with other fellow Angelino. No, it's Us actually really good stop. to have it with y'all because then I Girl. can like go in my bar a little bit. <laughs> I think I was doing the You're right. You're right. Because in LA. Yeah. Up here, I broke yeah. me down. You got to really Girl. have money and staff to do this kind of shit. Speaking of which, we are more than open to any Black women who make menstrual products to being a sponsor for Dim Black Mamas podcast. You can email us at dimblackmamaspodcast at gmail.com. I buy Honey Pot because, you know, I support the Black woman. It is plastic. But she doesn't have a menstrual cup. She she? don't have a menstrual cup, but it's plastic. I love her products, though, but the the wrapping is plastic. Does anybody know something I don't know about the plastic wrap all menstrual products? It's not that much plastic, I think it's okay. I I gotta do some research. Hmm. I will say for my for my breastfeeding support group, we always are looking for donations around breast um, Black Breastfeeding Week. And Period is the name of the company that produces Diva Cup. They were very very supportive. Period okay, really that's supportive. good. Thank you. And make thanks Thank donations. You. And they're inclusive. I like the Diva Cup. That's what I use. You know, when I'm going okay, out. I saw at home, that at the Target. Bad. So next yeah. next cycle around, I think I'm gonna go. Because even if I can change. Just one of us in this house, that helps. Now, there is a learning curve to using one. Oh, yeah. What does that mean? It takes you a minute to figure out how to insert it in an effective way so that, you know, it catches everything. So you have to wear the pad initially to help catch because you're yeah. just, just, you know, one round. One okay. round, yeah. To yeah. You feel comfortable. yeah. I really like it, though. So I'm very excited about our guest today. Yes. I'm always excited about our guests because we have good guests. Our guest is uh, Jania Williams, and she runs the Pathway the world. to mm-hmm. she runs the world <laughs> Pathway <laughs> to Lactation Program at North Carolina A and T. So I'm really, really excited to have her on to talk about that because it's the first of its kind at an HBCU public institution, and that's very, very exciting to me. Around more Black lactationists and just also around Black breastfeeding. So our show is going to run as usual. We'll start with the church announcements, roll into our mac and cheese segment, and we'll finish up with Black Mama Say. Yes. So I'm um, going to get us started on the church announcements. We're we doing the thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hello, beloved. Well, that was a long pause. I almost fell asleep. Ooh, still here. I'm going to stay in it, Crystal. Stay in it. Stay in it, Crystal. Okay. There we go. Stay in it. Here are this episode's church announcements and prayer list request. Just let it breathe for a minute. Thank you, Ayala. Thank you, Boo. Ah, that just gives me such peace. It just centers me and grounds me. First and foremost, I want to send prayers to Jacob Blake's family Mm -hmm. and his children who witnessed him getting shot Mm -hmm. and to the two protesters Mm -hmm. who were killed while protesting and to the person who was injured as well and just to the people of Kenosha right now. I just want to send them (sighs) love. I wish I had so much more to give or so much more to say. And I want to say that I'm grateful for all of the professional athletes who stop the world, Mm -hmm. even if they don't know what they're going to do next, Mm -hmm. even if they don't have it all figured out that they said, no, the world should stop right now and look at what's happening and it shouldn't be business as usual. So I just want to say that I appreciate them for doing that and recognizing that because there's so many times when we see things like this and Black people still have to get up and go to work every day and show up as if nothing is happening and no one ever asks how they are. And so for professional athletes to take that pause, I think that it was on behalf of so many people who can't take that pause 
So I'm grateful for that. So that's one of my prayer list requests. My final prayer list request is for all of the Black children who are doing virtual (laughs) school this year, specifically if they are under the age of like 10, where the parent probably has to be by their side. You know, I just want to say to them, you know, we have been raised in systems and institutions that make us really weary of any government entity coming into our home. And so I just want y'all to understand that for the children to just understand that if your mama tell you to turn off the camera while you're walking around the house, yeah. that you turn off the camera while you're walking around the house. Cause it's, you know, we, what we, she's saying we, is we don't need CPS <laughs> rolling up in folks' houses because they don't understand how we actually get down. Right. You know, they lack cultural context and right considerations. Right. And I just want to say to the black parents, you know, we don't have to put so much pressure. You're being on recorded ourselves. black parents is what she wants you to know. <laughs> You're being recorded. You're under the white game. You are under the. You are under it in it digitally. Yeah. You are tagged. You are marked. So act accordingly. That's what. Don't give the teacher say. no reason to put CPS on. Don't let the people show up at your house. You're being recorded. Oh, uh, I feel like I'm on Key and Peel when they have like Obama and then his like interpreter <laughs> like right beside him. <laughs> Be on your best white behavior when that Zoom camera is on. <laughs> Don't give them a reason. Don't give them a reason, y'all. Don't do it. So I'm I'm putting those people on my prayer list right Gosh, now. Hey. So those are my prayer list requests. Thank you so much, you all, for the interpretation. Thank you. You're so welcome. You got you. So uh, let's see, because you know I like I to go, say I got to go. <laughs> to I, go. I just want to go. <laughs> no, ma'am. No, ma'am. No. Um, praise reports. Oh, praise report. Praise. We lift our hands in the <laughs> sanctuary. It's a praise song. Give us the glory. Okay, we mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm also excited about my new Instagram. If you all haven't followed me, yes, we've been following you. We've been pushing that quite a bit. I'm really kind of flexing my, you know, wings here in the aha moment maven. I'm really trying to give the people aha moments. I'm trying to help them, help them come to realization and understanding. So if you haven't followed me yet, catch me there. Yeah, let's see. Prayer request. I would just like for you all to keep the whole state of Florida on your prayer list. <laughs> Is it the whole state? She said the whole state. From Tallahassee to the Keys. Mm -hmm. She said the whole state, girl. The whole, all of it. All of it. All around. They just need prayer. They just need prayer. So for a lot of reasons. I think that's all I got. So now, Tia. Y'all, the air quality. Uh, (laughs) That's a prayer request. It is a prayer request. (laughs) Blow it to other way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just blow it out the way. <laughs> my eyes are so watery. My nose is red. I'm just trying to hold it together. It's really hard during these times. I also think we need to have an in-depth conversation about hair loyalty, nail loyalty <laughs> during COVID season. Do we stick with our regulars? Do we go to who's open? If y'all know how I feel about my hair, so you know I have a lot of internal conflict. I definitely want people to be safe. At the same time, if a nigga's willing to open that back door, I will go in there and sit in that seat after wiping it down with some Lysol just to make sure. I was going to say, you got to go to who wearing the mask. Really, that's what I'm saying. She's in California. Oh, they all wearing the mask. So for folks who really need their hair done but struggle with hair loyalty, please put them on the prayer list. Mm. I think it's true for nails too, but not as much as it is for hair. I don't want to Not as much as it is for hair. it's different for hair. Um, I put any allergy sufferers in the state of California <laughs> on the prayer list. Prayer list. Uh, touch them, Lord. Touch them. Touch them. I also put any people working in IT right now on the prayer list because between the hours of 10 and 3, your shit is fucked. Okay? Between bandwidth and Zoom and all the millions of questions. Mm. I know you must be mm. getting from niggas who can't <sighs> even identify their modem from their router. <sighs> I pray for your patience and I thank you for your services. You are an essential worker. And anyone who's working for Google Classroom right now, oh, anyone God. who's working for Ooh, Google okay, and got to run that, that just, yeah. I just appreciate yeah. you yeah. so dearly. And definitely, I mean, I can't even go there because I won't be able to keep it together yeah. about 
all the other things going on. But I will say, really excited about the expansion of the Marley IO brand and team. We have great dream strategists, social media manager. Uh, our dream strategist is Claybrooks and Consultants with Tamika Claybrooks. And then we have Nikki Black of Little Cali Creative Co. I think I got that right. We have our sound engineer, uh, Juan, and we have our, a wonderful, amazing intern who her role is just shifting every day as we love seeing what she loves to do and what she feels good about doing. Her name is Sophia. And I think that like the beautiful part about if I could testify for a second. Testify, in tell February, it. February, starting at LLC for the first time. And like literally I told the story on shipping the shift of having $25 to open the account. And then it's like, you need at least 1500 I was like, well, I got $25. And to go from there to being able to employ and invest in people of color to enhance this vision and to be able to delegate, which is not something black women do easily and say, I don't do this well and I don't want to do it. It doesn't bring me joy. I can be more of a visionary if I hand this off and I'd be happy to put money in this person's pockets to do so. But also that we've decolonized our entire model of what it looks like to grow sustainable income that is an in integrity with our belief system, that is spiritually rooted, that is joy-centered, and that is decolonized. So Love that. even our onboarding and hiring process is involves dreaming involves not labeling, involves like, okay, let's give it a couple months before you decide what you want your title to be, involves like mentorship. I expect anybody working with me to leave me in five years or less because I want yeah. you to start a business and I want you to do the same things we're doing here. And so really growing into this place of learning how to finance the Afro future, we're going to be doing like a whole lecture series on that at the beginning of the year financing the Afro future using a decolonized, spiritually rooted choice and model to be able to be living evidence of that being able to be done is quite humbling and joyful and it never ends. You all know last year on the 19th of August, I wrote out my resignation letter and I did that in the letter. I said, I'm doing this so I can demonstrate the power of manifestation. And without even connecting to that letter or the date of that letter, they, they asked me, what's your last day going to be? from my job and I gave them the date and it was exact a year to the date from the date that I wrote that letter. And I think just constantly demonstrating I, my risk taking feels like less risky and more fun and more joy filled and all of it. And so just this really beautiful expanding things. There's lecture series coming up. Uh, the Black of the Brain is the lecture series. It's the Black of the, Bla the Brain campaign cohort and conversations is all about decolonizing mental health, which you guys know I've been so passionate about, but really wanted to create oh, yes. this educational component or unlearning component to Marley IO. So we're calling it the Black of the Brain. And so there'll be three different ways to be a part of it. You can just do a $9 monthly contribution. Just say, I support this work and let's do the work. You can join the conversations for $27 a workshop. They'll be coming out every four to six weeks, or you can be a part of the cohort. The cohort, I hope to eventually develop into a directory of decolonizer, mental health decolonizers or people doing the work in any facet. They could be teachers, they could be whatever, but as long as they're dealing with the mental health and wellness of each other. And this is a group of people that we can go to as a referral database and refer people to safely and know that they've gone through some decolonized training. They'll have access to all the lectures ongoingly. And so being a part of the cohort actually is a part of building a bigger community. My point is that like, I never felt as happy, fulfilled, or unlimited as I have now Oof. working for myself and my own spirit. Take that in. Hold on. We got to stop there. Say that again. Yeah. The people never. That. And I know that we think of it as a scary thing. And Crystal always cautions me like, because it doesn't work out the same for everybody. No, I think that does work out the yeah, same for I everybody. I think aligning with I really who do. you are in this life without judgment and without hesitation. I think we've limited that to creatives because if you're an actor or a singer, you kind of have to have that mm -hmm. mentality. But I think if we expanded that to- Anything, it's really anything. anything. You know, I've preached that mentality is sort of embedded in actors or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I, mm -hmm. I do think that that part is true for everybody. I really, really, mm -hmm. really do. Yeah. I'm honored to be a living, yeah. walking, breathing testimony. You know, yeah. as always, yeah. I'm so happy and thrilled to be sharing this information with folks in the form. I'm happy to not just think about people as employees, but as mentees and like to be 
building people up. I mean, the amount of workplace trauma that Black people experience has never been more evident to me than onboarding women Mm. of color. Yeah. And like really realizing, let's start with what you like to do and let's start with your strength so you can feel confident enough to share with me all these other things about you. So then I figure out what job you're actually supposed to have. I think that it feels scary to people because we are taught that- To be dependent on uh, this system. To be dependent on that system. So that kind of thinking doesn't serve us. But if COVID has shown us nothing else, it has shown us that these systems, they are fragile. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very and fragile. And that they are- they are dependent on the ways in which we choose to show up. Yeah. Creatives have always had to think that way. You got, you got to think you're going to make it. And so it takes that mindset to believe that you're going to make it. But I think everybody can be served in that mindset. And I'm Mm -hmm. honored that shaping the shift has just, you know, the same way we set intentions with Den Black Mamas, the intention of shaping the shift has forced me in the most beautiful way to, live that out. And I'm just really grateful. There's workshops and there's lectures and there's eBooks. And so all of it is available. If you follow me on all my platforms, you'll, you'll get a hold of it, but the work is just going to continue to grow and grow and grow. And, you know, it's funny at first, you know, I was like, I kind of just want to chill, you know, but then I'm like, actually, no, for me, this is the part that people got to experience in their twenties. Like I'm excited and thrilled. Like I want more of it. I want to be busy with it and I want to be having conversations about it. And I, I I don't want to be out of the joy, but there's joy in the working on the things that I want to do. And I've worked really hard to get to a point where like my whole life is really the work I want to do. I think it's different though. Mm. I think when you reach your forties, you know, a little something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, a little something, You got some meat behind Mm -hmm. what you bring in. Mm -hmm. And then if you add motherhood to that, you know what I'm saying? Especially if you use your motherhood as a source of inspiration and not as a source of constriction. I think what you are experiencing now, I don't think it's funny. I think it's inevitable. Yeah. Like I've stopped using the word, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. Look at what you've created. So yeah. of course this is yeah. going to be the yeah. outcome. Yeah, 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 yeah. So somebody always tells me it's the next logical step. And it's funny because the doubt that you have about things failing actually aren't logical. They're, they're right. not rooted in the actual evidence of your life. Right. And so what is rooted in that evidence is that it will move forward versus moving backwards. Here's the thing. I don't want you to say I'm experiencing now what people experience in their 20s because it makes it seem like you missed out on something in your 20s. And you did it. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. What the the next step that we are supposed to take. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you're experiencing now what the 40s are supposed to be. With a lot of fullness. It's not you experiencing what people experience in their 20s. Because you know, your 20s, girl, your brain don't develop to your 25. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're God. No, for real. That's true. And I think it's so funny though, because I didn't know if I'd have energy at this point because of the energy expended, but I actually am finding that I have more energy because of how I use it because I'm smarter about the way I use it. I'm smart about where I pull it from. I'm smart about what I don't waste it on. (laughs) You know what I mean? But I'm thinking about my twenties, you know, like you got one part of your life popping and one part of your life that's pure shit. You know what I'm saying? Like you got one part of your life where you're driven, you're on it. I'm about to do this, da, da, da. And then you got another part of your life where you're like, I can't, I pull this shit together. You know what I'm saying? And in our twenties, you know, we came from boomers who were like, you work a job for 25 years. What are you talking about? You want to switch careers. What are you talking about? You don't feel fulfilled. What are you talking about? You want to live your dream. You graduate from college, you get a job and you get a career. So we were fighting against that. I actually think you're not experiencing what people experience in in their twenties. I think that you're experiencing the next logical thing based on the evolutionary steps that you've chosen to take in your life. And the work you put in, the work you put in to be here. This is it. This is reaping that harvest. So yeah, I'm, yeah it's more, it turned into more of a testimony, but I'm really, yeah. I really think that. It's, well, maybe it's we necessary. need to add that to this section. We might know, need like, well, praise report, you know. testimony. Yeah, testify, yeah. honey. Because these prayer list requests, dear God. Yeah. Whew, yeah. They yeah. have been heavy. So I'm excited for us because yeah. I see all of us choosing to evolve. Yeah. And that doesn't always happen. No. And so, it you know, not. that's always a conscious choice. So I'm grateful. Yeah. Amen. And I'll shade to that. So that concludes. Oh, no. No, that's not how we do it. Hold on. I had got excited off the testimony. Let me just.
bring it back. There we go. Here we are. Please keep these events and prayer lists, requests, and testimonies in mind. And for information, as, as well, well as, as inspiration, inspiration. That I back you up. Appreciate the backup. I appreciate I was just the trying backup. to, you know, lace the track for you real quick. I- <laughs> to give the people a little something different, give them a remix or something. Follow us on Do Black Mamas podcast on all social media platforms or on our website at dimblackmamas.com and make sure that you are not just listening to us but you're also subscribed to the podcast and share with at least one person who you feel like can benefit from listening to us and now we're going to transition into our mac and cheese segment Nikisha you ready yes our guest today is someone who I'm very, very excited to share with you all. We really were blessed to be able to get her on this episode during Black Breastfeeding Week, and you will know why in a moment. Today, we have with us Jania Mitnall-Williams, MA, IBCLC, RLC, CLC. Mm. She's an international board certified lactation consultant, registered lactation consultant, and certified lactation counselor who has been supporting nursing family since 2007. She holds degrees from North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University, NCANTSU, and Union Institute and University in Speech Language Pathology and Audiology. That is a, that's a lot of information. Girl, I told you, you that's a lot why, of information. That's why I was like, the a lot of letters. I'm going to pass this one over to Nikisha. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and a master's in human lactation as well. So uh, currently, Jania is the program director of the Pathway to Human Lactation Training Program at NCANTSU. Okay, so we have to take a pause right here. Yes. To give all the Aggies time to do their yes. own shout out to themselves yes. wherever they are to make sure that they okay. hear the rest. So just a moment, just two seconds. <laughs> Okay, go, Nikisha. Okay. She also works for the Women's and Children's Center at Cone Health Alamance Regi- Regional as a lactation consultant, community liaison, and volunteer doula services coordinator. In 2015, she created Mahogany Milk Support Group. Black lactation groups had the best names. They had the best they names. Do. They had the cutest <laughs> names. They'd be like Mahogany. Chocolate acid. milk. Chocolate milk. Right. This is how the best name. Please don't, please don't. All right. Um, that's Mahogany Milk Support Group, and it uh, promotes, encourages, and normalizes nursing in Black and Brown families. That same year, she also became the first person of color and non RN to be hired as a lactation consultant at Cone Health. She is most passionate about creating diversity and equity in the field of lactation in order to promote better health outcomes for Black and Brown, marginalized and underprivileged families because they have the greatest breastfeeding barriers to overcome. To achieve this goal, she sits on boards and is a member of organizations geared towards addressing health disparities and collaborates with researchers on projects that focus on Black maternal child health. More than that, she developed a curriculum that equips the graduates of the NCAT P2P with a strong foundation in understanding how to recognize, address, and dismantle systemic racism in health care. We're going to learn more about that. Jania also spends time with her husband, Brandon, and her four sons. Y'all get these names. Catch these names, okay? Noah Ellington, Brandon Diggs, Henry Sidney, and Avery Harrison. Yes. Name your kids like they're going to be somebody. Do you understand? <laughs> Name your kids like they're going to be somebody. I seen an actor. I seen a judge. I President. Seen, I seen a financier. Honey. I mean, I seen a <laughs> lawyer. I mean, name your kids like they going to be somebody. You know what we got exactly. over here? Rashad Lamont Jr. That's what we got <laughs> over here. Oh. Rashad Lamont yes. Jr. That says something. I mean, there's a path for that name. <laughs> There's a path. There is a path. I didn't know Lamont. I didn't know Lamont was a girl. Up in there. Lamont. RJ is like <laughs> Lamont. Lamont. And I'm like, I mean, I was, I was in a phase. I remember. I, was, I remember. I we don't have to talk about. We it don't right have to talk about it on the podcast. Okay. I just think there should be moments where they know Auntie Thea tried to intervene in their lives that she was defeated. You know what I'm saying? That it wasn't that it wasn't brought up. It was that. Because it, it was at a different point in her journey. That was when I was in my resistance phase. And petty. Quite, quite petty. It was a petty moment. <laughs> and mm. I am in my obedience and surrender phase. Absolutely. Mm. absolutely. So, um, mm. 
Mm. I'm grateful for all the lessons that I learned back then. So let's welcome our guest. Welcome, welcome, <laughs> welcome, Jania, to the party, honey. Just then. Thank you, thank you for having me. Yes, we are happy to have you. Speaking of journeys, right? Let's get into it. We always like to ask our guests about their journey. So where were you 10 years ago? And did you think you'd be where you are now today? No, not at all. So, mm. <laughs> so 10 years ago, it's funny that you asked that question. Uh, almost exactly 10 years ago, I was laid off from my first job. Mm. Like literally the day before my husband and I oh, got married. God. So it was like, ooh, you know, we get married. And by the way, I'm going to need to get on your health insurance. And now we're a one income mm -hmm. uh, family. Damn. Like, a mom, like, soon as we get off this boat from the honeymoon. And uh, but so, you love me I, though, you love me though, <laughs> right? Right? For best That's how we know it's real, right there. And I said you want to get married. So, <laughs> right? And so, we uh, came back home and we decided to go ahead, start a family, had a little honeymoon baby. And at the time, my first son, because I was telling uh, you all that I come from a blended family. So when I had my first son, the hospital was interested in, you know, changing marketing to look more like the demographics of the community they serve. And they were looking for a Black family who was breastfeeding. So asked if we'd be willing to take a photo. And the photo ended up in front of the nursery because the hospital went baby friendly. And then they started putting it in the breastfeeding pamphlets. Mm -hmm. And I did pregnant with baby number two, just lost the job. People kept asking me all these breastfeeding questions. And so I was telling people the things that work for me. But I, I really felt like that Black and brown families deserve some concrete evidence-based mm -hmm. information. And so that's when I decided to merge my two worlds with speech and go to school for human lactation. I found a program that had a master's in it. Went back and allowed me to stay home. I took that severance package from that job I was laid off from, and they paid for me to go to school. And that was that was it. It was kind of history after that. And uh, now I'm doing exactly what I never thought I would be doing in a professional setting, but it blended my two worlds. Nice. So God was like, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and push you out. Right. That does happen. That's exactly what happened. So you knew right away that you were going to breastfeed. What kind of support did you have to make that decision? Yeah, so like, for me, it, breastfeeding was something that everyone did in my family. Oh, but wow. it has a lot to do with my grandmother. My grandmother was a Black maternity nurse oh, wow. back in the 40s, what? 50s, and 60s. And so, in fact, my grandmother, when I had my first child, because I'm from Colorado, so my parents flew out, like, right after a baby got there. But she's just down the street. So she drove up, and she was, like, helping me latch the baby wow. on. This is how it's supposed to be. This is what it's supposed to feel like. So it was something that, like, my family had always done. So to me, I was like, wait. There are not other black and brown people. Wait, can I pause and just say, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be the expert on this discussion today. And I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> Y'all, the air quality in California is shit, so don't judge me. But, <laughs> you know, I had the opposite experience. Okay. Mm. <laughs> My mama was like, mm. they're going to bite your titty. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and it was, they're going to be like too attached. You're not going to be able to shake them. Yeah. It was really yeah. like, you're not going to be able to do anything. And I think a lot of it for my family had to do with economics. Like everybody had to go back to work soon after. Mm -hmm. So I think there was this avoidance of commitment that breastfeeding really takes. And then sometimes I think maybe in order to then feel less guilty about that, it was kind of like, not demonized, but it definitely was yeah. deterred. Like it was For like, sure. you know, when they could walk to it, it was like, eh, you got to go. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. To hear like, it'd be so encouraging, so normalized. Yeah. What a blessing. Yeah. My oldest sister um, breastfed and my mom um, did not. And they don't feel no guilt about it either. They'd be like, they'd be they don't like, feel no guilt about did it. you turned out okay. I think both of our moms worked in factories when we were born, Crystal, and they had to get yeah, back to work. Yeah, right. They had to yeah. get back to work. I remember um, I wanted to have a baby at home and my mom that was like, who's going to clean up out of blood? That another one. My mom's face the whole time my sister was meeting with the midwife yeah. was like, mom, fix your face. <laughs> 
I, well, you're not having the baby at home. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, it's such a shift. It is. It is. When I would pump for my second child, and when I would put that pump on, my mom would just be like, oh my Who's God, so look at how long your titties are getting. And I was like, I know, mom, that's how it gets the milk out. It's so very I am so grateful. To hear that. It's beautiful. That. It was a generational. Yes. I'll be honest, I saw the topic and I was like, yeah, bitch, going to be real quiet today. Stop, stop. <laughs> but you represent the masses, right, Jania? Right. So like, these are the stories. Right. The I don't have nothing but trauma to offer to this company. I did try that with the first one I tried, but she went to NICU like right after birth and it was really, really hard to get her to, to latch. Um, So I did what I could and. I was okay with that. I, you know, I did the best I could for as long as I could. The second one, you know, I don't know if it's because she's breastfed or because she's an Aries, but that one, she, you know, she sticks close. She sticks close to the mom. You know, my mom was like, it's because you breastfed her. Even now. So this is really going to be so helpful to so many people because I don't know if it's just me. You know, I have, I, if it's just me, it could be. But it was not, not as strongly just, encouraged. It was not. I mean, Keisha not. was the first person I really met that was like so pro. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's nice. It's so earthy. And in college, I would have never right, guessed right. in a gazillion years that Nikisha would be breastfed. Or somebody's parent. Or it's a period, period. That's just, I just, that ain't yeah. me. Wasn't, that wasn't me. I am, we're talking about our journeys and how they, like, you know, yes. we've evolved. Came to a different place. We've evolved. And even though my oldest sister did breastfeed, she wasn't like super gung-ho. Like, mm -hmm. I think a part of her did it out of desperation because, not out of desperation, but as a way of connecting mm -hmm. Or to feel like she could do something because she couldn't hold her children when she first had oh. them. You know what? The nurses there told her to pump because my oldest nephew had lung issues. And so they were like, the best thing you can do for him right now is to give him breast milk. And that's how she ended up wow. breastfeeding. Yeah. So I'm I'm so glad to hear a story of joy, joy and, and support and encouragement. <laughs> Gather around, yes. everyone. It's story yes. time. You know what? <laughs> The other thing I heard in there, and I've been talking about this a lot lately, is how all of our earlier life experiences and jobs kind of all pull together mm. to show up. They come full circle when we find yes. our life's work, when we find that meaningful way we're supposed to create and give back. It all kind of shows back up again. So I know you're doing some speech language stuff, some audiology stuff, you know, you, yeah. all that's touching your lactation work to now. You're exactly right. Like I always talk about like full circle moments yeah. because that's what life is about. In fact, my oldest just turned 13 on the 5th of August and I was supposed to leave the field of lactation in the hospital and just convert to a different job title and things went crazy and they were like well can you take a shift on the fifth and that was that full circle moment for me like the day that I had him and they took that mm -hmm. picture it ended up being 13 years later the day that I clocked out for the last wow. time in that role wow yeah. wow wow so I was like all right yeah all right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. how does audiology and speech therapy connect to breastfeeding yeah so um, a lot of the things that I do are feeding team type things. So speech therapists actually work in NICUs with babies who have, you know, who are born earlier, too soon or sick with helping them coordinate that suck swallow because that sex oh. follow is needed for effective breastfeeding. And so the research and things that I did when I was in school, in fact, were on Babies who were born with cleft mm -hmm, lips, mm -hmm. cleft palate, babies with uh, oral facial anomalies. Like that's like my little wheelhouse, the tongue tie, lip tie babies. Oh, wow. I never knew that. Yeah, yeah. Because like, a lot of people always think, oh, speech is just like articulation, speech teacher. Mm -hmm. And I never wanted to do that. I always wanted to be on the feeding mm -hmm. side of things. And so that's the avenue I went down instead of speech teacher. That's amazing. Yeah. I never even knew that there was a connection there. Yeah. But now it makes oh, sense, yeah. right? You think about breathing, yeah. swallowing, it totally sucking, makes they're sense. all connected. Yeah. I remember it started early, early in the work and having to pull in speech and SLP a couple of times. Like, I wasn't even sure. Like, I don't know what she's going to do, but they said call her, <laughs> you know, and they really yeah. make a difference. Yeah. yeah with infants. So oh, wow. thank you for enlightening us. So I think NCANT is an HBCU. Is that correct? 
Yes, I'm just playing. yes, yes, I'm just yes. Playing. Mm. yes. <laughs> what HBCU largest? HBCU. It is the HBCU. You know, I this is I did not go to HBCU, but what I love about Black people and HBCU, yeah, you are really. I know all my shit's coming out. Is that <laughs> every one of them when they identify themselves, they are the something, right? Like it's like we are the first to ever baptize a black child we are the (laughs) first to invent xyz like it's always i love it because you know what that means like that's how you're supposed to write your bio bitch whatever it is you can put that (laughs) damn thing up i was the first one to like make these collars crisp you know what i'm saying i was the first one to pop my (laughs) collar that that started here and you don't even have to have evidence you just have to put it in your bio and then have everybody start saying it and i really learned that from hbcus even though i never attended one so thank you very much i'm gonna add some stuff to my resume my uh, bio i mean hbcu culture really teaches that it's i love it because i'm like oh my god they were the first to what dougie they were the first to dougie <laughs> i didn't even know that a&t is on a whole other level though i mean homecoming is called jiho yep. greatest homecoming on earth for real yes, yes. My, one of my classmates actually dubbed jiho and we were like Ooh, you that's, should that's, copy that's, wrote that's that. a bio that's a bio <laughs> I love it. Who can clone that shit? You know what I'm saying? Greatest homecoming on earth, man. And they ride that. They ride that out. They count down the days. You can go through my Facebook feed and it's like 30 days to Jiho. You know who they're like? They're like Leo's. Oh, I like that. Yes. That's what it is. HBCUs are Leo. <laughs> they're, they're the Leos of, the, of higher education. <laughs> they're, they're the Leos of higher education. Yeah, they really, really are. It's the thing. It's the thing. <laughs> Jania, I know. I happen to know you're a military child. You lived a lot yeah. of places, but you claimed Colorado earlier. How do you get all the way from Colorado right. to NCA and T? So family again. My mom is an actor. Mm. So my mom went to an HBCU. Like Nikisha, you know, because my dad's a missileer. Yep. And like, it's lonely. Like when you grow up in the Midwest or like on the coast yep. in like the whitest of the white cities, yep. just mm. because of what he does in air, well, what he did in aerospace. So, um, wait, your dad is the what? He, my dad is a, was a missileer in the air. Force. What's a missileer? You asked too many so questions on a recorded podcast <laughs> under a Trump administration, bitch. You asking too many right. questions on a recorded podcast. Yeah. I did a Trump administration. I was like, right. And this, I used to, I just let the word pass. I don't know either, but it sounds like something associated <laughs> with some shit we don't need to know about. That's what yeah. it feels like. So okay. I just ducked out. Okay. I saw Nakisha mm-hmm. head duck down a bit, so I, I followed her lead. And here you are. Already said too much. Okay. As didn't. much has already been right. said. Too much has okay. already been said. We okay. can't take it back. Yeah. So like you know, listen to my mom. Like I would notice, like no matter where we were in the world, because I my dad made sure we traveled the world too. But like no matter where we were. Like there was always an Aggie and they'd be like, Aggie Pride. And I'm like, wait, you know people in like Germany and Italy? Let me go all these places. How it is, man. And my mom was like telling me about like HBCU culture, like sororities, fraternities, and then telling me you have family. Like there's an Aggie everywhere. Like you always have family. So my parents- Literally. Were, literally. So like they were stationed in Colorado the longest. And I was the first, I'm the oldest of three to graduate from high school. And I was like, well, I want to go to A&T. And they were like, wait, you really going to go that far? And we're all here. I was like, yeah, you've told me all these great things about this school, like my whole life, like I'm going. And so I came out here and that was it. That was it. All she wrote. Yeah. Okay. So- Encourage the children to breastfeed and send it to HBCU. Yes. There you go. I yes. got it. Okay. You I go. got like a year to pull that shit together. <laughs> I'm running out of time. And y'all don't even have any really on in Cali. No, we don't. Really, I mean, we don't. So that's the hard part for me is that like as much as I want to do it, I I don't I, my family's centralized in there's family in Maryland. So that the closest would be Howard. But a lot of them that are in the South, I don't have family in those spaces. So it's always thinking like who and how could I keep them connected once they're there. So that's always like my my challenge. But I do think it would be so good for them pending a sister could like pay out of pocket because you know i don't want no dramas with my with my <laughs> well, i don't we don't yeah, talk we about don't that talk about that again we again that. we're we'll talking about we're that dead. but pending a bitch could ball out that's what I, I yeah but my daughter our daughter went to an hbcu and yeah. she was there when trump was elected but it was like she was living in a yeah. bubble that's the part about hbcu 
months. Yeah. So like after she graduated, uh, she stayed with us for a while um, because of COVID. And she's like, man, has he always said crazy stuff? Mm -hmm. And I really feel mm -hmm. like Obama was president in her mind right, until right, she graduated right. college. Well, probably it in all her like, teachers' minds too, you know. Yeah. She was like, we knew what was going on in terms of police brutality and things like that, but my life wasn't yeah. in and out every day, Donald Trump. She didn't feel like she was constantly thinking about racism in the space that she was in. Not that she didn't know that right, it existed. Right, right. She could kind of, um, as she said, just live in her blackness. Yeah. I think it does create sort of a bubble in a healthy way. That's another reason why I chose to go to a &T, like outside of like the family connects. It was like, you know, I lived as a minority mm -hmm. for so mm -hmm. long, like my whole mm -hmm. life. Like I can embrace my blackness, like learn more about my mm -hmm. people, my culture. And then when I got there, I was thinking, you know, it's everybody's going to be the same. There's so much diversity. Yeah, in black, right, so right, right, right. much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody talks about it. And I'm like, yo, I'm yeah. like telling my kids, you know, probably we should come to an HBCU. Well, listen, listening to you talk yeah. about that, and I also went to a, a PWI, but yeah. it was down the street from FAMU. So, you know, I kind of, kind of experience. I'm just saying say that. A lot of time at FAMU. Wow, I can't even imagine what it would be like to be entrenched in Blackness in that way for those formative years. It must yeah. change mm -hmm. you. It must change you. It does. It, it really does change you. And like, you know, it's mandatory that everyone take like African-American history class. And I'm sitting in there going, wait, that's what really right, happened right, as like right, an 18, right. 19 year old person. And then I had the benefit. My roommate, who's my best friend now, was an African-American history studies major. And so like she would like keep telling me the stories. And I'm like, yo, that's crazy. Yeah. So much you went, we won't get otherwise yet. Wow. Right. Well, listen, I, we could talk about this all day, but we got to talk a little, a little right. bit about breastfeeding. You, you know got me I mean? Google searching. I'm at HBCUs. <laughs> Art focus. Yes. So this lactation program at NCANT is the first of its kind in some ways. I want you to tell us all about what's yeah. so important about it. Um, you might have to break down all this pathways jargon for us. Girl, yes, yeah. the pathways, the pathways, right? So we know that there's like the three pathways to becoming a lactation consultant or an international board certified lactation consultant, which is like the gold standard of LCs or lactation consultants. Um, pathway one, you have to be a person in a health career that they have recognized. Pathway two is the educational track. And then pathway three is the mentorship. And so I just tell people, take the path that you want to take that's gonna get you there the fastest. Like mm. there's lots of love to give to everybody doing their own thing, but pick the path that you're gonna get the most bang for. And if you are into research and you would like to take those college credit classes and roll them over into a degree, then I suggest Pathway 2. And that's what we are. We're a Pathway 2 program. So Johnson C. Smith University was actually the first program at HBC to have it, but they are a private institution. So a and being a public university and a land-grant institution, we're able to accept a little bit more as far as students are concerned, like the number of students, just for financial reasons, um, helped with easing that barrier for students. Um, so we are in the graduate college and we're actually in the family and consumer sciences department mm. that houses fashion merchandise. Oh, uh, wow. And design. I mean, I did <laughs> yeah. do a quick Google search and North Carolina does have nine schools on top of that list. Yeah, yeah they have mm -hmm. a ton. But I like how you brought that full yeah. circle. I, like I mean, I didn't want to say mind. that because you thought, but I was like, North Carolina popped up kind of <laughs> quick, though. So I might have to like have a side <laughs> conversation. Let me know. Let me know. But, like, we strategically wanted to place these programs in HBCUs because we know that less than 1.5% of IBCLCs are black. And that's crazy because more than half really? of are in the United States. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, our, our governing body does not keep record of race or ethnicity. No demographics, yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> but yet they collected it when we sat for the exam. Uh, so, you know, we just find each other on social media and conferences. I guess maybe that's why I'm shocked because I feel like I see so many Black only women. Only because you know us. That's only because we know, yeah. That's like Black therapists. Like, you know me, so you know where to find Black therapists, but we didn't, when, it's not a ton. It's a unicorn oh, profession. Wow. That's what I call this. I'm like, we're unicorn. Yep. Like, we out here and we magical. But you yeah. gotta find us. Yeah. Oh wow. Wow. So you said less than one point five percent. 
it is believed. Oh, they because they don't, track, they don't track us. They don't mm. track us. I think there's 35,000 IBCLCs in this country. Yeah. And it, yeah, we're not 1%. We're, we're not. Two, for sure. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait. I'm no math major, right? Okay. But you're saying there are 35,000 IBCLCs mm-hmm. and you Less all are. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah. You probably are thinking what other people have thought. Like people are like, oh, we thought the black lactation consultant just worked at night or like we missed her. <laughs> well, this, but this also ties into the earlier conversation with my breastfeed trauma. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yes. Had I seen just one black face be like, you can do this, bitch. It's easy. You're supposed to do it. Your people have been doing it for a long time. Like, really? It would have been a whole other, whole but other instead, trend. I have folks yeah. like, don't let them bite your titty. Yeah. <laughs> and then that was like, what? They do that? <laughs> and back then, Thea, there was no Facebook. There was no there way was to no verify Instagram. this information. All you had was your mama. That's it. That's all you had. Oh, yeah. That's all you had. You know, I thought we was, you know, really like coming up, you know, we got Black Breastfeeding Week. They got the Black Breastfeeding Group. So I really thought we was, you know. Out here doing it. And out I here doing part it. Part of it is like people are not educated on the health benefits for themselves and the baby. But oh, I also absolutely think not. people need to look at it as a reclaiming ancestry and heritage like it's it's ritual like you you know we think about taking care of the baby and each other physically but spiritually it also solidifies some things because this is a new spirit to this earth and like this is an anchoring ritual for you and this new soul right so like right. i think people need to think of it in that context too like it's because even sometimes if you explain to them the health benefits they, they treat it like a physical chore i've heard it talked about like yeah. a chore. Yes. but yeah. you can really enter into it as ritual and it, if you're a new spirit a new soul in this new body like you need something and you want something that makes you want to stay here and stay comforted and stay anchored mm. and stay centered you know and I think it could be approached very, very differently. You know, again, this is all stuff I've had to adopt through Nagisha and my own ancestral <laughs> digging because, <laughs> but I never thought of that way. True. I mean, we start, we start with the healthcare benefits, but it doesn't end there for sure. So it's so amazing to me how quickly they've taught us to separate from our children. You know, when mm-hmm. you think about how our children are parentified and uh, how our children are adultified, you know, we talk to one-year-olds like they're five, we talk to five like they're 15 and it starts so early like we don't expect that baby to still be crying or need soothing when it's spent all that time inside of us and we expect within like a month or two for them to be adapted we never would have thought like that had we not been in a capitalist white supremacist society that said you have to go right back to work if we would have been in a space where literally people would have sat back and felt like the most important thing we could do at this moment was anchor this baby and anchor this soul and heal ourselves. It's so true. I heard Monifa Bandele say that last night. She said that the um, kind of robbing the opportunity to to mother our children from us by forcing us back into the workplace so quickly is contributing to the adultification of our kids. And that I never thought about that. That's exactly what it is. And I see it all the time because black women have some of the most unrealistic expectations of anybody on the face of this planet of ourselves, of our children. I have to remind Black women all the time and working with them in therapy, it's a pandemic, you're you're in a pandemic too. We're in a racial uprising, you're in that too. To expect yourself to be able to do all these things is just completely unfair and unrealistic. And so I think that happens almost so immediately. I see my sister, my nephew's not even, is he a month? He may be a month, but where she expects herself to be and to be able to do, and even him, and even the two-year-old, I have to remind her, like, that's incredibly unfair to all three of you. Like, none of you should have to operate or think that way right now. But yeah. it really is economic. Again, going back to what I was saying, like, m- my mom had to go back to work really quickly. She knew that. You know, I got six weeks of maternity leave. You've already done the calculations. The last half of your pregnancy was figured figuring that shit out. Yeah, I don't think that we talk about that enough, the impact that capitalism and the economy has on on whether or not Black women do breastfeed or even think that they can um, because, you know, chest feeding, which I think is the best 
method. But if you do have to go back to work, they don't know that they have other options. Real quickly, Crystal used the term chest feeding. There's a lot of language. So there's breastfeeding, chest feeding, body feeding, nursing. There's all sorts of um, terms that are used to describe the same thing. Um, And it has a lot to do with the body that is feeding the baby and how they feel comfortable identifying Identifying. Mm -hmm. that part of the body. So um, we use them interchangeably um, in case you were listening and was like, what she said? The language has been a journey for me as well. Nikisha corrected me on um, what did I ask for? If you knew about any, what did I say? CLC? Yeah certification, something like that. And Keisha was like, well, around these parts, we don't really uh, like that term. And I was like, oh, okay. I did not know. I mean, I I didn't say that. (laughs) What I was saying was, (laughs) what I was saying is, oftentimes people think CLC is a stepping stone before IBCLC. And they are not. CLC is one certification that's around 45, 50 hours. They have lots of competition. They just happen to have picked letters that kind of imply that. So no, you can take one of many courses if you're interested in getting Mm -hmm. um, that first level of certification. I'll leave that there. Back to Miss Janine. Caught the cue, Thea. I didn't say anything else about it. You see, I caught the cue. You did. You did good. So she said, I'm going to leave it there. That's where we're going to leave it there. Because, you know, with, whenever we have conversations with Nikisha, we have to be careful. We are under a Trump administration. <laughs> we have to be careful. Not unlike Jania's dad. <laughs> They're good, correct, correct. Certain that. things we don't say. Now we do. Now we do. You know what I'm saying? So yes. okay. this is a moment in time. When Black mothers can feel discouraged and overwhelmed, what kind of support do Black mothers who want to breastfeed really need right now? What do you think? I really think that they're just needing to identify with another Black mama who's doing the same thing that they are doing as far as this breastfeeding journey is concerned. Because support goes a long way. And what I talk about, you know, at conferences and things is the mirror, mirror effect people want to see themselves do these things because then it's normalized yes then they can identify with somebody else doing it like so many times that I connect people with you know different support groups they're like I can do this nobody in my family did this but now that I have you know all these other people to lean on I can get through this. And like, it's always surprising to me, like the ones who like all the providers have counted out, like they're not going to breastfeed this baby. I'm like, well, let's just wait and see. Mm -hmm. I heard from a young mom, teen mom the other day who had a very difficult uh, journey and she's like seven months breastfeeding, got all her friends breastfeeding. Oh, I'm like, look, look. Yeah. And like her family was like one of the ones, like give the baby a bottle, put cereal in his bottle. Like, oh, we did that. We did that. Mm -hmm. To make them sleep longer. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's all coming out. It's okay, Thea. Forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. It was damn near a milkshake. Oh. It was. Oh, (laughs) wow. Mm. Did that work? I mean, you know, they're here. Mm -hmm. Jania, (laughs) can I add to that? I would like to say what they also need is money. We've identified several times the impact capitalism has had on that. What would it really look like to create a fund or a foundation that literally just takes in donations for the purpose of offering grants to mothers so that they could stay home an extra month or two. Because the other thing I know about breastfeeding is every bit counts. Every bit counts. Mm -hmm. So like some people can do 10 months, some people can do three months. But my point is every bit counts. The decision to stop shouldn't be economic. Mm. As a person who like, Crystal knows, I've had a money journey. Like, But I'm, I'm like, it's just energy that can release something else happening right and and what we could release for these mothers is any fear or worry I see my sister's tension about working that is causing the tension about the breastfeeding that is causing the pressure for the kid to like do things that they cannot developmentally do yet and that is causing her to feel like inadequate when that can't happen and so all of it is really stimulated by the money issue so that they can take in that counsel that you all are offering them I think in the back of their heads it's still the idea of like, but I got to go back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to go back. I can't go back. And I know yeah. therapeutically, like when I'm working with people, there's things that they can't apply because their actual day-to-day situation, Disconnect. right? And like, it's not the solution at all, but I'm saying it could definitely be something that we would have control of. We can take care of ourselves and provide for these women 
something that no one else will, I, quite frankly. I think that that's a really good part of a solution. The only other mm-hmm. part I'm thinking of mm-hmm. is that their job is held for them until they get back. Right. True. They can't right, be right. 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 Mm-hmm. But let me tell you something about you, black birth worker, lactation, black women. OK, let me tell you something about real quick. Let me just toot some horns real quick. That is a breastfeeding joke. But here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even plan that shit. Did you see that? Nikki? Sure you like that? I like that. That was good. That's good. What I love about and you I am so grateful to you all for like really introducing me to the black maternal health movement, the black breastfeeding movement, because these are movements that have to be sustained when there's no video documenting our deaths, when there's people who are not collecting data on our situations. You all have had to sustain this movement off yeah. of the, the idea that black people just deserve life. They deserve yeah. to have life. This form of activism sometimes requires for white intervention black death and Mm -hmm. to see you all make the strides that you're making and do it in a way through life through birth through breastfeeding it's a much harder climb and sell to non-black people because non-black people are really only invested when they see black death it's required for them to stay activated but you all have sustained these movements off of the premise of black life Black health, Black thriving, and those are way less popular when it comes to gaining allyship support, just to be true, completely honest, you know? So the fact that you guys are getting these weeks recognized, I have no doubt that you, we will get additional and can fight, well, you know, in California, you know, bless, bless all things Gavin Newsom, because I really feel we could make him do a lot of things with Black women. <laughs> But I miss, I miss Gavin. Including like holding your job, right? I just feel like I've seen you all move mountains. I know they may not feel like mountains, but in the landscape that we're in, they are mountains and you've done it off of black life. Yeah. Because people really didn't start listening about black maternal health until it was centered around death. And, and a lot of the conversation still is centered around death and not like the fact that Black women are given C-sections mm-hmm. at a higher rate. You know, all these other things are that the complications that Black women have are just the experience that they have in maternal health yeah. period. But I thought what you were saying, Jania, about the Mira, Mira work, I think that I show up as a Black-ass doula, like I'm not just a doula, I am a Black doula specifically interested in helping Black birth persons. But I never thought about the impact of what you called the mirror to mirror. I think that when it comes to breastfeeding, I always go the health Mm -hmm. route. And I don't ever go the route, look, this person that looks like Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. has done it. And so do you feel that the mirror to mirror has more impact than the health route? Or can you tell? Definitely in the work that I've done, the mirror mirror impact is is greater just because like we Mm -hmm. always talk about the health benefits for a baby health benefits for lactating person and it's making them feel like you know this breastfeeding that they're doing is something that's like robotic but when you put a face with it like it then becomes personal and it's like oh we do that too you Mm -hmm. taught me let me go teach so and so and then it's like oh yeah look we do this too Mm -hmm. Not just for like the health benefits. It's just kind of like, we all know we should eat healthy foods type thing, but how many of us are really doing it? But like, if we see, Mm -hmm. okay, a lot of people are doing this. Let me try this. Was it Michael Jordan? Have you heard Michael Jordan was nursed? Three or four, wasn't it? Four, three or four. Mm -hmm. I like to drop that randomly (laughs) to people. (laughs) I don't know. You know. Don't think that'd be helpful, Crystal? He's so intense, man. If anybody watch the last dance series oh gosh it played repeatedly in my house i don't know if i want to be his teammate you know i think thea could be his teammate you know what i'm saying i don't know (laughs) i like fun too i'm intense (laughs) and disciplined but i really like to enjoy myself yeah okay he's a good example in terms of mothering we're talking about raising so you know right a little michael yeah baby to be strong and big like Mike. No, okay, never mind. I'll, I'll look right. A, a Maybe we example. should highlight his mama. I mean, that's the one who did it. You know what I'm saying? Like she breastfed till this age. You know, I don't. I mean, I, you know, I think it could go fifty fifty with Mike. That's all okay. I'm saying. Okay, I'm just let's let that go. I'll find somebody else. Now with fathers, 
that would be a huge thing if you're married to someone like, you know, I'm married to Shy from the South Side. So if somebody Lamont. was like <laughs> Lamont from the South Side. So if somebody were to say, you know, Michael Jordan was breastfed until he was four years old. He'd be like, we breastfeed to the baby four. <laughs> and he's a huge breastfeeding advocate. Anyway, like <laughs> it's a thing for him. I think with there are a group of black men out there that that message would resonate with. You know, with. this conversation has been, I think, a little bit more revealing than any of us actually. I believe so. I believe so. <laughs> I feel like really there was something awkward. right there. Something so right there. Both instead of, I don't know how this is going to come together, but maybe <laughs> just the idea of breast milk brings shit out of people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like this was I feel like I just learned positive. something about Lamont. I looked at Nikisha, Nikisha looking at yeah, me, yeah. and it's like, what's going on there? But, Ooh. you know, it's all good. After I had my C-section mm -hmm. with RJ, I was done. I was like, this birth did not work out the way I wanted it to. I had to have a C-section. I ain't trying to breastfeed. I ain't trying to do nothing natural because the birth wasn't natural. That was my mindset. Mm. And so I was in the hospital for a day and RJ latched on to Rashad's arm. Mm. And Rashad was like, can we just give it one more try? Because he's <laughs> sucking on my arm pretty hard. <laughs> I took him and he latched. I never had any trouble with him latching ever. Uh, Rashad was just a huge advocate of it. How long did you breastfeed today? Do you have all the pillows that you need? Aww. Like he was just a huge, huge like that makes all the difference in the world of it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Having Great. support at home. Unlike yeah. mama's, yeah. mama's tripping at home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, he was a huge support for me when it came to that because mm -hmm. I would have, I would have given up otherwise. Yeah. Same, same, same. I have a supportive partner. I find my, right. I feel like that's a privilege. I certainly know many, many exactly. parents don't. Yeah. So black birth workers often have more than one job. Like you, Janiya. Right. You, you, you had done a lot of stuff. I got resume. the letters. You had done a lot of yeah. stuff. We right. often lose sight of checking in on care providers. You are a volunteer doula program coordinator. So what kind of support do black birth workers do or need to do? For and their own like well just training? practicing some self-care for yourself. Mm. So what does so that look me, like? It, like my husband and I have this thing because the boys go with him like every other Friday. It's like guys night in the man cave. And I get to do whatever I want to do. For that night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Have me what? fly, watch TV, go to bed early, don't have anybody bothering me. And they don't text you or call no. you and ask you where no. like nothing they is. They don't. Or, they mm. don't. Mm. They yeah, don't. And I'm like, it's amazing. Mm. And, and you know, I, I do have a great partner where like he realizes that at the end of the week, like I am burnt out. So like he knows, I'm not gonna bother, I'm gonna take the boys, like we're gonna do this. Like if they have to eat just like straight up junk food, like they're not gonna bother me. Like that's them. I see them on Saturday morning and I am a happier person. And that's what they need, a happier person. So they're gonna let me do it. <laughs> what? And how often is this? She said every other Friday. That could be life changing. Yeah, it really could. could. So like literally when I was pregnant with the last one, I was Taking like, notes. you know, it would be nice to have a girl. She gonna mess up my Friday. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> I'm over here like, how can I do this with all these girls? I was, just... I was like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Cause soon oh, they all wow. gonna wanna like do like got like after the quarantine, like the baby gonna be old enough to go places. Oh, nice. do guy do stuff. Guy stuff, you know. Whatever that is. Uh, well, we don't know. Lakeisha and I have no idea what that is. We don't know. We don't know what that is. Chris, do your gut do they all leave like that and go? Let leave? me tell you, when they go get a haircut, like I advocate <laughs> for the barbershop appointments. I'm like, hey, it's, bar it's barbershop Saturday. What right? one did you call to make sure? You know, he going to be there. He can cut the hair. I advocate for the barbershop Saturdays yeah. because it becomes a thing. Like oh. they stay gone longer than you anticipated. And I think being at home by yourself is an undervalued. Oh, my God. I'm never home alone. So I'm never. I think this is how Mark might feel, though. <laughs> this might be what he gets. I'm beginning to understand. Let me tell you, when COVID hit. And I just got in a mood and Rashad is like, well, you know, you're used to spending a lot of time by yourself. I was like, oh, that is it. I am not. I am not. I don't know what that looks like. Because the kids will go to school. I work from home. You know, we have a daughter, right. but she's 
in her early 20s. So she was in college. So they would be gone on Saturdays. So I spent a lot of time alone. And I think that it is an underutilized or talked about it. form of self-care. People always talk about going out, going somewhere. No, being home alone is like, I love it. Oh my God. Sometimes I just sit and listen. I totally value being at home alone. Totally. Those barbershop days, right man. Mm-hmm. Those barbershop days, man. Like, man. And like, I'm like, the younger two don't even really go like that yet. Girl, wait till they start going. Because now mine are on the rotation. Yeah, yeah you got to build up to the rotation. Now they're uh, on the every other week rotation. Girl. Right, I got about another, about another year. On Thursday, I'm like... It's, Barbershop yeah. this Saturday, right? Real talk. It is a thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right? <Saturday> <laughs> <I'm going laughs> <on> conversation. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. I'm going to come up with something. I'm going to come up with something. Don't you worry. <gasps> so listen, Jania, here we go. Here we go. We have manifested so much on this show in the short few years that we have been around. When you look back in 10 years, what story do you want your work to tell I black want mothers. my work to tell Black mothers that we not only can nourish our babies by providing them breast milk, but we actually have people who look like us to support us. My goal is to create mm. more people who are in there, not just at the bedside and doing community work. I want these graduates from the program to go out and write policies because we know that systemic Mm -hmm. and institutional racism is all up in those policies that internal and infant Mm -hmm. health. And I want them to get in there Mm -hmm. and like go work for the CDC, go work Mm -hmm. for the World Health Organization. Mm -hmm. Like I want them to go do, I I always tell people, I want people who study under me to be greater than me. That is my Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. goal. That's what I want Mm -hmm. to see in 10 years. Mm-hmm. Can I tell y'all something? I had the I had the opportunity to oh, meet yeah. these kids and they are phenomenal. Mm. They really are. They really are. They're going to be doing Amazing big work, work in That's the so field. Beautiful. Amazing work, impacting lives um, in just a short time. So we'll be on the lookout. I do have one more question. So we did talk about how with Black breastfeeding, we always talk about the health benefits, the personal health benefits, right? Like how it impacts mom and how it impacts the baby. What are the the community benefits, like the long term community impact that breastfeeding yeah, could have? So on our again, culture? it's that mirror mirror effect because I always tell people that to see where we're going or what needs to be done, we need to look back at the past to see what happened. And so, starting right there with wet nursing and slavery, you know, we were forced to feed master's child before our own. It set the narrative that black babies are weaker, they're more needy. Well, this is the time for us to take that narrative into our own hands and change it. Mm. Black children grow up stronger. Black children will be able to move forward and grow within the community and expand because people are better as far as health is concerned. And so that's that's really what what I want this to look like in the future. Mm. Well, thank you. This has been a, as Thea said, a revealing conversation. Illuminating. It has been. It has been. I think Thea was healing in real time. I think she was healing in real time. I feel good. I feel like I feel like I've been breastfeeding. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I knew it was coming. You knew it was coming. It was coming. You were too close. We were about to do it. I feel good. That's fantastic. Uh, so, Jania. Tell us what you have coming yeah, up and how so we can support coming you. Coming up real soon, we are going to start accepting donations for the Pathway 2 program. And we want to start having scholarships okay. yes. in place for these individuals because, unfortunately, higher education certification mm-hmm. programs mm-hmm. are not covered by financial aid. So that means that the students are paying out of pocket to do this program. And so we've been trying to raise money to sustain the program as well as raise money and implement Mm -hmm. scholarships for these people because the work that they are Mm -hmm. going to do is so needed. And we're just trying to eliminate barriers from all sides. Yes. Can you share the link with us to donate when you have it? We'll put the link in our bio. Long term, do you see this program expanding beyond a certification program into 
a major? I do, I do. So again, remember how we're housed under the Family and Consumer Sciences Department? Well, the lactation program is underneath mm-hmm. child development. We have a huge child development program. And so within that mm-hmm. already this year, we added a lactation cognate to the undergraduate level of child development and family studies. And so that mm-hmm. way, if they want to, as soon as they graduate, they can filter into the P2P program. But we have all intentions of making this perhaps a master's level degree. Mm, wow. Nice. Oh, wow. The infrastructure, you know, we, we have, it's a research-based institution. Mm-hmm. The things that people aren't even thinking mm-hmm. about, we're, we're talking about, you know, a and T is huge on the College of Engineering. There are some talks right now of having like the first black owned and invented breast pump. Mm, can it play music <laughs> while we pump? Yeah. Girl, you know it will play music, Thea. Bitch. You know, and they'll Bitch. have they'll have this this week's playlist curated by such and such. Girl, you know what? music i think that's already in the works if not already here that can't I, some of those ideas came out of the um yes. breast pump hackathon i was in a few years ago yeah. i remember i was thinking there's there's a couple of masters of arts programs you mm-hmm. graduated from one of them um but this sounds like it has the makings um, yes. to be a master's mm-hmm. of science which is going to be phenomenal mm-hmm. so yay mm-hmm. i'm excited for that well we're so happy to have you on we're so excited to spend time with this you you know you've been listening to our old episodes and cackling oh, alongside yeah, us yeah. <laughs> so thank you for being a long time listener and supporter uh-huh. we appreciate you and that's it that's it that's all we got on mac and cheese people we thank miss Janina. Thank, thank you, you thank you so much thank you so yeah. much to think yes. about for Definitely. real yeah i think i'm gonna like rename us greatest ah! podcast on earth so that would be g po ah! that's what you needed because you've been trying to tie that in that's what you needed that's i've been trying to get it that's what i needed g po hashtag trademark in that okay Great. all right you know what nikisha whenever you do that long sigh and okay whenever yes. you do that i, I, I know what it really means i'm not you know, G-Po it is. Your dream G-Po. is your dream. So and I support it. G-Po. I like G-Po. Support Thank you. Thank you for supporting me, my sister. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> it's time for our next segment, which is Black Mama Say, where we take sayings that Black Mamas have been saying forever and put our own little spin and lens on it. Who wants to go first today? I'll go. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Today is Black Mama Say is. Oh, okay. A hearken to our forever first lady, yes. Michelle Obama. Yes. It is what it is. Yes. Take it away, Crystal. All right, Black people, and keep it with my theme for the election. So I was quoted on this podcast as saying, I did not want to vote for another <laughs> white man. <laughs> Time to eat some words. I had begged and pleaded that a white man not be the nominee. Mm-hmm. I petitioned mm-hmm. the party. Mm-hmm. But what I realized is that I should have been petitioning y'all. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so now we have a white man who is the Democratic nominee. We had an opportunity to lift up Julian Castro, who was the most radical person in the primary. We always talk about a black agenda. He had a black agenda. Mm-hmm. We had the opportunity to lift up Elizabeth Warren, mm-hmm. who also had a black agenda. Mm-hmm. But times is hard, and I understand that. Mm-hmm. My own state mm. practically handed Joe Biden the nomination. Mm-hmm. I'm not bitter. I am not angry. Mm-hmm. I've come to realize. What did you realize, girl? It is, it is what, what it is. is. <laughs> it is what it is. So here we are. Mm-hmm. But the white man as the nominee. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to muster Mm -hmm. all the strength that I have. Call on the ancestors, the Orishas. Call on them. Beyonce, Mm -hmm. Jesus, Mm -hmm. and every definition of God that I know and carry myself to the polls and pull the lever for Joe Biden. Or Kamala Harris, depending on how you see it. Depending on how you see it. And what I know for sure is that as problematic as America's baseline is, we got to get back to baseline. We got to get back to at least the baseline. We don't even have a base right now. Mm. <laughs> There's no bottom. So I am encouraging you all to take up this call of it is what it is mm-hmm. and do what you motherfucking got to do. Do what you got to do. Because I'm going to tell you, if Crystal goes out and pulls that lever and, and he don't get elected because y'all did not, go out 
I can't promise y'all a podcast after November. I can't promise you that. I can't promise you that. I can't promise it. It'll be a podcast, but you'll have to pay $5 to hear it because I will not (laughs) give away shit for free no more. more. Okay. So take up my cause, hearken my call. Even if you got to do it early, because if you wait to November, you might not do it. You won't do it. You, let's be real. You won't do it. You won't do it. I mean, these motherfuckers is trying to take, take out the post office. The post office. It's just they the trying to take office. out the post it's office. Nothing. It's true. It's true. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I just ask that you hearken my call, that you take up the mantle of it is what it is, and that I'm going to do what I have to do. Not on behalf of the ancestors, mm. but on behalf of all the Black people living in red states. Mm. Dude, ooh, Jesus, speak for them. Because speak for them. Speak for them. All we have is the federal government. Oh, <laughs> it is what a motherfucking is, y'all. My candidate oh. didn't win either. Mm. Okay. Can I slide in there, Crystal? Sure. Sure. I, I low key have two it is what it is is that i'm going to try to okay. bring together okay. okay okay let's go for it and i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna thread them okay all right let's hear it five minutes of the rnc that i could <laughs> watch this might be the very same one i had <laughs> that i could watch continue mm-hmm. <laughs> correlated with the coin shortage Mm -hmm. we ran out of coins y'all and cash shortage here's what i'll tell you black people we don't have faith in institutions we have faith in the bible though we don't live by it all the time we don't believe in high blood pressure or diabetes but we do believe in a good ass science fiction conspiracy theory story (laughs) And I'm telling you right now, the whopper of all stories is sitting right in your lap, okay? I don't know how many collective uncles we have rolling in their graves at the thoughts (laughs) of these niggas electronically robbing us overnight. And you literally saw who would be doing it standing at that RNC stage. Their money is there somewhere. And it's probably not in paper form. It's mm-hmm. probably in these meltable coins that nobody can now get. <laughs> that they're going to turn into bars and trade for all sort of resources. That when our money is literally being used <sighs> to fuel our new uh-huh. ovens that are <laughs> no longer electric. Okay. Wow. What I'm saying wow. to you is that. What are you saying, sis? What are you saying? That it is what it is. It is what it is. Red alert time, people. It, it is, is happening. What it is. Everything they ever told you about these white folks. Everything Facts. they ever told you about your monies and how to stash it, about the banks. Everything they done told you. It is it what is. it is. You were right, Cleophis. <laughs> you were right, Cletus. You were right, Brother A Bar X. You were right. Oh, okay. And yet and still, okay? Now, listen, people, listen. What that means is we have got to know while we are eating pork and beans over a pile of burning what used to be money, (laughs) that we did everything we can, including (laughs) showing up to vote. Here we are. What I'm saying is Uh all stops, threat level midnight, throw everything you can, the bacon soda, Uh all of it in the pot. (laughs) All of it in the pot, God. y'all, right now, including to your vote. Level. In the pot now, okay? Oh, God. Old him knows everything in the pot. <laughs> the, the one with the red cover. The one with the, the, one red, with the red cover. cover. <laughs> I don't even know where we are anymore. My point, though, is that I don't oh, want to hear about what ain't going to work. Niggas is great. <laughs> Identifying the problems. What I'm saying is I want you to throw everything you have at any possible yeah. Hail Mary solution uh, between now and November. Do you understand? This is what I'm telling you guys. Here's my hand. I love you black people and I mean this. I will excommunicate <laughs> myself <laughs> if he gets elected again. Not excommunicate yourself. I will excommunicate myself. Do you understand? Yeah. I can't do it. Black women, you know I'm not talking to you. That's why they name no black names. No black women names. <laughs> 
you know who you call it to. when a child separates from their parent like what um you call it uh emancipation, emancipation. But is that what uh what's her name's daughter's doing right now y'all know yes kellyanne conway kellyanne uh-huh. conway yes, that, yes. I, you want to mm-hmm. emancipate yourself <laughs> the United I, States. Okay. I might that was well done was that both of them three? that's it i just wanted to bring up the fact that there ain't no coin and five minutes of the rnc should tell you That's everything it. you need to know. That was well That's done. It. Thank you. I don't even know that I should follow that up. Really, I was just going to say that watching the, the few minutes I watched of the RNC, what became really clear to me, what I was affirmed in, is that the level of delusion of the folks on that side, it runs deep, man. Oh, my God. Like, I don't know that there is a route to recovery and coming back to their clear minds. So... Uh, we all we got. We all we got. We all we got. <laughs> CMB, baby! Cash money, brothers. We all we got. And it we is all we got. What it, it is. is what it is. Between now and election day, you're going to hear some words about people crossing the aisle. Maybe some Republicans will end up voting Democrat. They're lying. They are lying. The level at which these folks are delusional, Mm -mm -mm. they are standing firm where they are in those lies. They fucking with your mail. How are you going to get your They are. So they ain't going nowhere. They're not budging. They're going to vote like they did before. The same numbers they did before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We all we got, y'all. We all we got. CMB, baby. CMB. And I just want to say, y'all, I'm a little scared. I'm very scared. Because I love us. And I know we are very, uh, you know, we can, you know, we go with how we feel at a given moment. We're very feeling people. I hate to end on this note. I really hate to end on this note. Well, it is what it is, Nikisha. It is what it is. is. I'm going to go buy a diva cup that might cheer me up. (laughs) And might make me feel a little better about humanity if one person transitions to miserable (sighs) cups that we can save maybe a whale or somebody. (sighs) Girl, I had to get that off my chest. I have been saving that. Okay, you want to carry us out, Nikisha? Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Dim Black Mamas. And don't forget to vote. I mean, check out our website <laughs> at www.dimblackmamas.com. You can also send us your thoughts about the show after you vote. Show us some love <laughs> while you vote. <laughs> and ask us some questions at dimblackmamas at gmail.com. Oh, and if you're a black mama looking for inspiration and some love, then check out Black Moms Connection. You can follow them on Instagram and there's a Facebook group. And if you are a woman of color interested in starting a podcast or you have a podcast and you want some inspiration or information, you know, those are my two big things. Follow Women of Color Podcasters, WOC Podcasters on Instagram and join the Facebook group as well. And in closing, we hope that you are rooted in joy, freedom, and abundance. That's all we got. We ain't got no more.